Hey everybody, welcome to episode 34 of the Intellectual Podcast. Tonight we have Tamara Jacobs on the show. Tamara is a very interesting woman. She teaches people how to brand themselves and do a better job of presenting themselves in public situations such as keynote addresses and in business. And she and I have very, very different styles of speaking. I'm very laid back and want to chat for long periods of time. She's very focused and teaches people how to stay on topic and stay within their message. Um, so the two of us sitting down together was very interesting. And there's a, a fascinating dynamic that goes on between the two of us as we kind of feel each other out and sort out really just kind of how maybe we can both coexist in the same world, I think. And it's a... Um, very fun episode uh, from my perspective, and I enjoyed it very much, and I appreciated uh, Tamara sitting down with me. We have a number of things going on uh, this month, so things are a little scattered. Uh, I apologize. We are preparing for Jessica and William's wedding uh, on May the 4th. Um, you may know Jessica and William from our Sci-Fi Sunday podcast. There are a couple of our hosts there. And yes, they are in fact having a complete geek wedding. May the 4th be with you. They're getting married on the 4th. They're going to be dressed up in sci-fi character costumes, I believe, um, at least during the reception. And they're encouraging guests to be dressed up as well. So it's going to be it's going to be fun. And uh, we're getting ready for that. So Sci-Fi Sunday is a little sporadic. Uh, in terms of how many hosts we have, but we've got content coming out on that show every Sunday. So if you haven't gone to the intellectual lately and checked out sci-fi Sunday, by all means go to the intellectual.com and check out sci-fi Sunday for the latest in sci-fi horror fantasy news, as well as some fascinating content that we recorded recently at the San Fernando Valley comic book convention. And Thank you, dear listener, for joining us here, as always, on the Intellectual Podcast. And now, without any further ado, Tamara Jacobs. Talk hard and enjoy the mindgasm. The Intellectual Podcast starts now. The, I, I teach this stuff, and the, um, and the optimal length for most people is about 22 minutes, and here's why. Because that would be a half-hour sitcom with eight minutes of commercial interruption. Mm -hmm. And and Ted Talks has even refined that further. Now they're 18-minute increments, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Yeah, generally, I, I agree. Um, but I we, hear a bite coming. We find, the majority, we find the majority of the people who listen to us listen to us in, in their car when they're stuck in traffic. And mm -hmm. That makes it so relevant. Yeah. You know, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> you're, so, you're the show of last resort. Damn, I'm in the car. <laughs> well, it, it's um, it's like I'm stuck in the car for 45 minutes to an hour. I don't want to hear any commercials. So there's That's no true. commercials That's on true. our show. And, well, there is a commercial on our show, but it's usually at the very, very end or yeah. just right at the very so, beginning. Right. So you listen to it and it's done. It's, over. it's 30 yeah. seconds of... 45 minutes to an hour. Who cares? You know, it's that's true. not a big deal. Um, it's almost like pirate radio back in the day. You know, mm. it's like, this is as raw as it gets, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And so then we talk I and, <laughs> and at 40 minutes to an hour, generally mm. we match up with most people's commutes home, certainly okay. in California. I see. So, so this is it makes for a, a, a good time there. Mm. But, uh, but the beauty of podcast too, is it's listen, come back, listen, come back, you know, People kind of consume it as they as they need to. They can do it in twenty minute chunks, or they can do it in an hour. It's up to them. So and since we don't have a set schedule, it can be as long as, mm -hmm. as you like. I see. Yeah, so so really nice. uh, we're sitting here with Tamara Jacobs. Tamara, how, how do you? Oh, thank your you. Name? No, it's Tamara, like Tamara. day after today, mm -hmm. kinda. Yeah, <laughs> Tamara. Yeah, yeah. Tamara with the accent. So, um, and you you run Tamara Jacobs Communications. Can you tell Inc. us a little bit about what you do? <laughs> Inc. Ink. ink. I worked really hard to get that ink. Um, the ink can be hard. The ink was very hard to get, yeah, yeah. because to see the ink makes you official. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that ink thing is, yeah. Uh, about me. I, I think that 
I, I, I'm so used to not being about me because what I do is about others and making other people successful. So mm-hmm. I'll tell you about me in my role to develop you and others because that's what I do. I'm a brand builder. Right. And so I tell people that, frankly, when you're communicating, it's not what you want to say. It's what they need to hear. And if people are tuning in right now, you know, you're telling me that their drive time, they're, they're, they're captive. I'd like to think that they're more motivated than that, that this isn't a <laughs> default opportunity for them. Well, we but, do have a lot of people who listen at work. Well, there so, you go. Oh, yeah. well, that's even better. Sure, don't work. <laughs> you know. Bunch of time clock and listen to the podcast. <laughs> anyway. A lot I, of the scientists who listen to us listen while they're at work. That's what I've, I've Oh, I discovered. see. That makes it even more dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't take that drug. Anyway, but I, I think that to to put in perspective what I do, it's try to use communication skills and experiences to help other people be more effective communicators. And, and in the process, as they advance themselves and enhance themselves, they have to be benefit-driven to others. So in other words, whether we're taking your time because you got nothing better to do or we're taking your time because you actually chose this as, <laughs> as, as, as the preferred option, that's something you can't get back. Mm-hmm. And in today's, I think, very, what do I want to say, overly ambitious society, um, we think we can multitask. We really can't. And the thing we covet most is our time. Right. And they've done studies and they've, they've found that new hires, when you talk to them about retirement, and vacation, they don't really care. They just want to know what days will they get off, when will they have flex time, that kind of thing, because they have found that the most valuable commodity to anybody is our time. Right. And, and if you think about it, and it's very interesting to me, this may be the only time that that somebody is not multitasking. And we're not sure that they're not, by the way. But if they're driving, then they're sort of multitasking <laughs> because they're driving and listening to us. Let's hope that they're not also texting. Oh, my, good Lord. <laughs> yeah, my, my point is that it's, it's harder and harder to communicate today in our very distracted society. And by the way, people are rude. Have you noticed that? Yeah. And, and, and it's okay to be rude. I, I'll share a story. This morning, I was having breakfast at this very nice restaurant in my hotel, okay? And the guy sitting next to me not only was on his cell phone, but decided that he was so agitated during the call that he would pace and be on his cell phone. (laughs) So he kept circling my table, yelling into his cell phone. I felt like I was at a rodeo. Mm -hmm. And and I thought, you know, this is this is the the height of of rudeness and there are no consequences, by the way. Right. And and um one of my colleagues, a guy who works for me, talks about private behavior in public places. And there, there are no, there are no boundaries anymore. There are no norms. Well, everything, so, everything is in our hands now. All the things that we used to have to go home to do, like place a personal phone call, we can do it anywhere. And it's, it's, we've lost the kind of that's behind a closed door. That's the sort of conversation you have and, in private. And now that my phone rings while I'm sitting at dinner, well, I need to it. answer it. You know, I can't. I can't let it go to voicemail. Heaven forbid. Oh, heaven hears forbid. The machine, and, and there was a wonderful. I don't know if you saw Jerry Seinfeld on the opening night of Jimmy Fallon, and and he was talking. He did this wonderful comedy routine about people and their cell phones, and and you people, you people. You know, I need to stay connected. You people, mm-hmm. and then he talked about how. It, we really weren't that um, compelled by you people, not the way I see you swishing through the numbers and deleting like a gay French king. <laughs> it was very funny. <laughs> and and it's it's the, the, the truth that um, I think that ultimately the pendulum may revert back because we've lost the art of proximity. We've lost the mm-hmm. art of focused conversation. And I think that at some point, we're, we're going to be so fractured um, and, and people will be so siloed that they'll be lonely. And I think we'll crave human communication. If you sit down at any any restaurant, on the bus, on the train, whatever, wherever you are, nobody's relating to anybody else. Yeah. And and there was this sad uh, story that um, I read. This is now a couple months ago. Some poor guy, a commuter on, on one of the trains in the metro Philadelphia area, was shot to death because apparently there was some crazy person on the train who was 
pointing his gun around at other people. I finally found this target and randomly shot this guy. But there were no witnesses, even though people were everywhere, because they were all focused on the screens. Looking they down. were all looking down. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So, it, I experienced it, that when I was on the subway in New York last time I was there. Um, I've only been to New York twice. And the first time was in 2007. The second time was in 2010. And, you know, 2007 was when the iPhone first came out. It's true, yeah. And the subway experience in 2007 versus 2010 was very, very different. Because in 2010, 2007, people were up. You could there, you heard people having conversations and they were engaged with the person sitting next to them. Or they were sheepishly, you know, keeping their eye on somebody that they didn't like the look of. or what You know, you could, you could their, see all the stories because yeah, yeah. everybody was paying attention to what was going on around them. 2010, there's iPhones everywhere, other smart devices with touchscreens. And at that point, I'd say only a quarter of the people on the train were engaged with somebody else on the ride. And I would, I would bet these days, a few years further down the road, even from that, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised going on a subway in New York and see nobody talking to anybody. That's pretty much where we're headed. Yeah. And, and you see people walking into fountains and everything else because they're so busy, you know, with their head down texting. So, you know, my, my job is to try to help people um, cut through the color and engage you, even though you mm -hmm. have all of these other distractions and opportunities. And and it's so hard to to really get through the first time because people think that they hear you, but they really don't. You right. can't do two or three things at the same time. So uh, we spend a lot of time, my company, and yeah, I did start this company. Um, my company tries to help people be memorable in in forgettable circumstances. Mm -hmm. and that's really what we try to do. And and how are you memorable? Well, first you're original. And right. and it's very interesting. You were talking about going to New York. Okay, so here I am in Los Angeles. People are so busy trying to be somebody they're not and and they're not doing a very good job of being somebody they're not. <laughs> we actually had that conversation two nights ago with another guest. Really? About yeah. You know, yeah. Not a actress being who grew up in Brooklyn who's here now. Um, she modeled and now she's acting here. And she's like, everybody's always trying to be somebody they're not. It's bizarre. Well, and, and they're always trying to be the next, the next best thing. Mm -hmm. And, and by being the next best thing, they're the now worst thing. I mean, <laughs> it, or they're, you know, they're just the next same thing. They're the next same thing. Yeah. You're absolutely right. They're the next same thing. Only they're like a not good next same thing. Right. <laughs> you know, cause and, you have the one original, then you have all the, the, Deprecating yeah, copies. Copy. <laughs> yeah, that, that's like you know the knockoff of the of the of the runway. Mm -hmm, I mean, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not quite right. The seams open up, and right. and so what I what I try to do is first tell people to to be original. Now, there's something interesting. I, I hate when people say, "Well, be yourself." See. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Most people are in therapy trying to find out just who they are. So how, you know, which self am I today? So I don't think it's, it's, it's not about self-discovery. Um, what it is is about recognizing what you do well and not focusing on your deficits because probably you're wired that way and you're not going to really be able to fix yourself. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is find what you think you do well. And there was an interesting book I was reading the other week and um, – it, it's strength finders. Originally, I thought, oh, well, this is some nouveau, trendy, don't want to read it. And then I thought, no, actually, there's merit here because, and it's, it's, it's published by Gallup. And what they said in the book was, uh, you know, especially what parents tell kids all the time, um, you need to be better at math. You need to bring up those math scores. Well, that kid probably will never get a, you know, a math scholarship to, to, to college. But what they will do is excel in theater or something. Mm -hmm. So instead of constantly trying to correct your deficit, why not advance your strengths? Which I thought was very interesting. Yeah, that's actually exactly what happened with me and my dad as I was growing up. Yeah, because I was a straight A student all the way up until about tenth grade, and on like October twenty eighth of my tenth grade year, I stopped turning in homework. I just didn't care anymore. Um, I, I thought I, I got to a point where I was like, school is stupid. I learn more on my own. I'm going to, and I basically did just what I needed to graduate from that point on. And it was a constant battle between me and my dad about how I should be studying and what I should be doing at school. But what I was discovering for myself as I was going along is I wanted to do more art based learning. Mm -hmm. And there was not 
very much of that in my school. Uh, yeah. Everything was math and writing and very maybe I should have paid sure. more time to the writing. But <laughs> but um but I wanted to get out and perform and I wanted to paint and I wanted to hmm. do photography and mm -hmm. and get out and do those things. Those were the things that I felt I was good at and I wanted to focus more of my time on. Sure. And it took us years. It wasn't until I graduated in 1993, I left for college initially as a education major immediately switched to theater mm -hmm. after I got to school and I couldn't be stopped. <laughs> and then I rolled in and became a roadie and did all these mm -hmm. things for years. And it wasn't until about 2002, 2003, when my dad set foot on one of my short film sets that I was directing and he acted for me because mm -hmm. I just, I just kept pushing him. You got to come out and act for me. I got a role for you. I want you to be, I want you to act for me. I want you to see what I'm doing. And he set foot on this set and he, he performed for me for a couple of days and he goes, I had no idea. This is where you belong. Mm -hmm. And I've been pushing you for years to do something else. And I was, I was, mm -hmm. I was wrong. This is mm -hmm. where you should be. This is what you should do. And from that point forward, he was the most supportive parent you could possibly hope to have. He took screenwriting courses with me. He ended up producing a film wow. with me, uh, brought his business sense because he was a business guy. He brought his business sense mm -hmm. to our Mm -hmm. our creative world and you know that's how we were with my father up until the day he died we had this beautiful synergy he, he was the business guy and understood the art side and it was nice you know instead of fighting all the time we came to understand one another better and it was it was great and i think i think there's a lot of schooling that's just everybody's trying to force everybody into the same peg i think that's true uh, because you know what not everybody should be the same or will be the same, mm -hmm. and that's that. That's what I'm 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 trying to help people do is and I and, and oh, fine. So I call it be your brand, right? Mm -hmm. what, and 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 I've been told by several people, well, that's just too esoteric. No one understands the notion of brand. See, I think everyone understands the notion of brand, and I'll tell you why. Because a brand is something that is unique and exceptional, mm -hmm. and oh by the way, consistent. We can count on a brand. So, you know, if you are really good at something and you're consistently good at it, you become known for it. Right. And then I seek you out because of it. Right. And, and if you think about it, we have certain brands, like we don't reach for a tissue, we reach for a Kleenex. Right. We don't make copies, we, we Xerox yeah, things. Bingo, yep. you got it. Yep. And, and so, you know, how mm. do you become a brand? Well, you don't become a brand by being an also ran or a wannabe. Mm -hmm. That's somebody got there first. Oscar Wilde was famous for saying, "Be yourself because everybody else is taken," and and so you know you don't need to constantly introspect because if you're constantly looking in, you can't look out. But start assessing what worked. You know what made you successful in that situation. Um, why did that work? And and my daughter is an actress. My daughter is an actress. All right, and she's always looking for feedback, which I think is great. And and my. My method or my message to her is take what's relevant and discard what isn't. Right. Because you don't always know the motives of other people. But but yeah, it's good. Do you know, do a self check and and um and I, I have another theory and now I'm digressing, but this may be useful to your listeners who are stuck in traffic. <laughs> uh, you know, and I and I love stories. So you can you can uh, Mark Twain was famous for saying that people forget headlines but stories stay with you. So if you right. want to really engage somebody, always have some wonderful stories to tell. That's actually a fascinating quote because we're such a headline driven society. Yes, now. and that's why nothing's memorable, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And and so you know, if you if you think about um trying to make yourself memorable and, and the stories that, that need to be told and, and what you want to share, have some of what we call very relatable experiences. And and so, you know, my 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 daughter, I think, because she is an actress, um, can can make certain things very original that would be mundane, and that makes her memorable. Mm -hmm. And and I think that um, you know some of the things that we forget about when we're trying to to build our brands is how about liking what you do, and that's the point. I can't fake passion. Right. And and so. You know, energy is infectious. You don't have it. I can't catch it. Right. And and some people give it off, and some people are, are energy vampires. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I talk about when you're a brand, it's really playing to your strengths. And and if you like what you do and you like who you are, you see, then you can actually 
infuse other people <laughs> with your energy. Right. And we actually say that on this podcast all the time that yeah. people respond to passion. When you're passionate about something, everybody feels it. When yeah. you're not passionate about something, nobody could care well, anything and, about and what you're know, talking you're faking about. Faking it too. Yeah. You know, and then I'm just uh, really. Um, um, I met my, my, this makes me sound very grand, but I met my wonderful publicist on Sunday and we were going over the week and what was going to happen when I'm out here, you know, and, 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 and who I'm going to talk to. So we, we, we were very business driven and, and we were going to, to have this conversation uh, on the rooftop of, of this hotel. And it became the most uncomfortable, <laughs> um, overtly, what do I want to say? Demonstrative scene, you know, right. and and um, you know everybody came with with the look du jour, with the with 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 the, the Ray Bans and the rolled up T shirts and and you know and the and the Britney <laughs> Spears hats and really just stop it and and. It, it, and I thought, my God, I'm in the land of the same. And it's not so hard to be different. Right. Just look East Coast, which is what I do. Right. And it's who I am. Right. Um, I did a media interview earlier today, and people took note. Why? Because I don't look. And I don't want to. I'm fine. I wear a suit. This is me. And uh, I would be dressed a little nicer. I just want to. Well, no, I like your I, Superman t shirt. Yeah, I think it's me. I would be dressed a little nicer, but we were actually helping a friend move before we came over I here. So. <laughs> That's how important you thought I, this conversation was. You know. and, um, wipe the sweat, walk in the studio. Anyway, uh, and. I wanted to be real for you. Yeah, you, know? you were very, you're very real. You're very real to you. And I, I just think that we, we need to get better at not just sharing, but advancing our. Um, our point of view mm -hmm. and you know to to be serious for a moment um, there are real world things that are going on and and we are so anonymous and feckless that we're not affecting either personal change or public change and and so I would like to to have people with purpose rising to the top people who inspire people who teach um, People who can get things done, mm -hmm. and and so I do. I go back to this notion of brand because if you are known, if you are trusted, if you are liked, guess what? You're a leader, right? And brands are leaders, and and they've done all these studies, and they have found that when given choices, people will select brands over generics eighty two percent of the time, even when there's a cost issue, right? Why? Because there's some kind of security in going for a brand. And and the power brands. And so why don't people get that? Why are they so busy? Um, well, that's what Apple and Samsung have done, is they've, they've made their brand the thing you feel comfortable with, and everybody else has been racing for the bottom. That's true. That and, is true. And it's to a point now with smartphones, between Samsung and Apple, they control like 84% of the market or something. And everybody else is just clamoring for the scraps, you know? Well, let me ask you it's, a question. It's amazing. Right? All right. So in the spirit of candor, we're having the conversation, but there are other people in the room. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you wanted to impress others, all right, how would you describe yourself? Three words. Me? Yeah. Three words. Just three. Don't give me hyphenated words either. Just three. Um... Solid, trustworthy, uh, and leader. That's those are probably the three words I would associate right. with myself. Solid, trustworthy, and leader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know what I say to you? Good for you. Here's my point. <laughs> See, those are your features. But unless you can attach those to a benefit to others, it's just self-aggrandizement. So now do the do the drill again. And if you are X, that means what? Always attach. A, a feature to a benefit. If you're a leader, what will that do for me? If you're trustworthy, what will that do for me? So try it again and, and tell me now what it's going to do for others. Uh, well, <clears throat> as a leader, I do my best to help the people around me excel at whatever it is we're doing okay. to be the best that we can be at any given moment. Okay. I know that changes from moment to moment. Um, Trustworthy, uh, I don't think there's any relationship that can survive without trust. So I try to be as trustworthy as possible. 
And I want to be the type of person that somebody can feel confident that they're not going to be lied to. They're not going to feel worried at any point that I'm going to betray them in some way. So you make other people feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Okay. And? And then solid. Um, I, I really personally dislike people who are wishy-washy about things all the time. And so I make, I make decisions and I stick to them. If I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Um, it kind of goes back to the trustworthy thing. Um, so there's so a lot of count together. on you. But I, yeah, I want people to feel like they can count on me. Okay. Here's, here's my point. Why doesn't everybody think about that? You know, it, it's very interesting to me because we always, you know, it's very easy for, for me to describe myself and, and, and okay, but all I've done is aggrandize myself. Mm -hmm. If people don't feel that there's something in for them, I'm sorry, vested self-interest, we're selfish society, then I will not react to what you just said about yourself. Right. And, and so if I had any advice for all these folks in, in Los Angeles, including the guy who helped me with my bags the other day, and I said, you're way too smart and way too good looking. This isn't what you want to be doing in life. He said, no, I'm an actor. Everyone out here right, <laughs> is an actor. An actor. And, and, <laughs> and so, you know, if, if, if this is the land of the, of the want to be famous, want to be um, in front of people, then I think what we just discussed is an inside tip. Mm -hmm. And I tell people that when they're interviewing, you know, don't go in and talk about yourself. Talk about yourself in terms of what you can do for them. Right. It's always, what can you do for me? Right. And and it's not selfish. It's human nature. Mm -hmm. And then don't make what you say small. Sort of, kind of, just, maybe a little bit. Because that goes to your point, you're not solid. Right. You're equivocating. Right. And, and I talk a lot. I'm not used to being put on the spot on my interviews. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was caught a little off guard. <laughs> yeah, you told me that uh, the last interview, you did the other person talk for two hours and you had five minutes. Not here. No, no, no. No, no it's this good. Is, it's good. Every, every interview's got its own personality and its own flair. And, but so in the good. end, all right, so life goals, what do you want to do? Uh, I want to be a filmmaker. Um but I, I, I'm not an actor. I'm a, I'm a producer. I'm a director type. You know? Okay. Um, and then the podcast, um, I, I, I love conversation. You do. You clearly do. I just love and This is so free form. I've never done yeah. one of these like, huh, where am I, where are my talking points? And you said, <laughs> we're just going to, we're just going to evolve. Gonna evolve and we're going to wing it. Yeah. 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 Here, here's the thing. Get into the multitasking thing. Yeah. This was, this was my discovery as I started doing these kind of interviews. If I have a set list of questions. I stop listening to you because you're waiting because for I'm waiting next, for the opportunity okay. to interject that next okay. question. That's good and point. if I've done a ton of research on you at some point in time during the conversation, I will get bored because I feel <laughs> like I already know it. You know what I mean? I mean, if I've got a stack and I love like inside the actor studio, John, Jonathan Lipton, he, he shows up with a stack of or James Lipton. Mm -hmm. He shows up with a stack of cards, like six inches tall. He knows everything about the people he's interviewing and somehow he manages to keep it interesting. I can't do that. If I've got a stack of cards, six inches tall, I feel like, why do I need to talk to you? Cause these are the things that I'm going to talk about and I already know it. I'll just go write a blog about you. You know, I want to discover conversation should be about discovering and the only way i can discover is if i'm looking you in the eye and i'm paying attention to what you're saying and we actually converse i see and so if i have too much stuff prepared forget it we don't go anywhere creative it's just structure okay well let me ask you the question see and this is what i always because i do i have a big business following right this mm -hmm. is what i do so i'm so i'm so outside my comfort level quite honestly having this conversation <laughs> you know i'm dressed in an escada suit and you're wearing a superman t-shirt well, and, you know, and, so, and, so, and to be clear yes. i left my office job two weeks ago okay. so i i had a i had a very decent paying uh i was the vp of a publicly traded company i, I walked away from it two weeks ago oh god this I is taking us to a whole America. other place all yeah. right so so two weeks ago we would have been a aligned. little bit more on i would have showed up dressed differently but i've made a decision to Embrace my creative side again because I, I took two. Year, I took a two-year break and said, yeah. "Okay, I'm going to go. I'm pushing forty. I should grow up. I should do whatever." 
and I was miserable for two years because I wasn't being oh, honest great. with so myself. Oh, you're miserable being me. <laughs> well, I wasn't being honest with me. Dress in the suit. I'm kidding. I'm yeah, kidding. I wasn't being honest with me. Yeah. I wasn't being true to who I am. Yeah. You're obviously being true to who you are. You're very comfortable in in that suit. I couldn't wear that suit. No, you nor yeah. nor should you. We <laughs> have to we, we have to describe <laughs> for your listeners that I'm in canary yellow right it's now. Beautiful. No, yeah, well, thank it you. Is, so I, much. I love the bright colors. And and so you know, in in terms of of talking to you all right let me play another game because i i do i advise all these folks because i call it outcome-based conversations which is so not what we're having right here which is so interesting <laughs> no notes no research i don't want to know let's free form. what's the I'm end like, game where are we going yeah, with this yeah. I'm like, Woo! and i and i do i have this whole program i've trademarked the outcome-based conversation they're like yeah no that's just free form so there is one thing though that i that i do always ask people Anytime you invest your time, which is your most valuable commodity, thing you can't make more of, resent giving up, what are you, what are you getting back, okay? Mm-hmm. So I always ask people in any communication venue, what are people going to know walking out that they didn't know walking in and why do they care? So in, in this conversation, what are they going to know walking out that they didn't know walking in and why would they care? That... Um, I'm corporate, I'm East Coast, and I'm learning what's going on in Los Angeles. You're formerly corporate, finding your inner self, and they're sitting there going, and, and? And we can get along. Ah, so listeners, (laughs) (laughs) if you're still in the hamster wheel or you got off the hamster wheel, we can communicate, right? Okay. And and I think the other thing is maybe what uh, we're we're sharing with people right now is that you have choices, mm-hmm. and I don't think there's any wrong choice, you know. And um, and interestingly enough, and I'm gonna either compliment my mother or or, or maybe throw her under the bus a little of both. <laughs> a lot of times it's both. Yeah, right? well, it could be both. Yeah, I'm highly <laughs> conflicted. I remember when I was in college and. I, I thought I wanted to pursue an acting career. Mm-hmm. And my mother kept saying, oh, no, no, it's not safe. Be a teacher, be a teacher, right? Yeah, because that's always the fallback, be a teacher. Right. And and um, I always felt very guilty that I wasn't a teacher, that I pursued, at least for a short time, an acting career. Fast forward, my daughter now, who's music theater major. Oh, my mother couldn't be more magnanimous. <laughs> Pursue your passion. <laughs> Don't do something safe, you know. Just live your life. And I'm it's thinking, the joy of being a grandmother. <laughs> yeah. She's somehow found her inner peace, too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so, so, you know, what I would, what I, I guess people will, will get out of this conversation if, if they're invested in this conversation is the idea of, of going with your strengths, um, trying to, to be authentic and be okay with choices. Mm-hmm. And, and by the way, the other thing is, and not to get esty here, but, but, but forgiveness. Um, I'm never going to be a perfect person, and I'm right. okay with that. Right. I, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm, um, I'm always telling my daughter that perfect is the enemy of good. Right. That, that gets back to what I was saying earlier about um, excelling at whatever you're doing in the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had this conversation with a couple of the people on our network who've been struggling with, you know, how well they're performing at any given event or whatever. And I keep telling them, all you can do is excel to the best of your ability at the moment that you're there. And whatever your best is at that moment is the best it is. It might not be the best that you could do a week from now when situations have changed and you had better rest that night before because your kid wasn't crying or whatever, but you be the best you can be at that moment all the time. And and don't worry about if it's not as good as the other time, because all you can ever do is the best you can do at that given moment and, and stop blaming yourself for not being, you know, Super extraordinary, amazing, stratospherically awesome, well, a hundred percent of the time because it's impossible to be that. And there's another is all you can be is the best you can be at any. Well, moment. and that leads to another point, which is done is good. And and um, again, I I will laud her because I really do have a hero, and it's my daughter. Um, she's not only a gifted performer; she's really a brainiac. She's brilliant, but the problem is she's almost too smart because. It can always be better. Can always be better. So mm-hmm. when she's writing an email or responding, you know, to uh, a director, or whatever, 
she keeps rewriting and rewriting. And my point is, perfect enemy of good, press send. Right. So I would say to all the people out there, done is good. Mm-hmm. You know, because um, it can be brilliant and it can always be improved upon, but if the other person isn't receiving it, <laughs> yeah, I really just had an exercise in um, virtual um, nothingness. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the geeks would call that uh, all the revisions to Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, bingo, bingo. So it was perfect the way it was. Why did he keep messing with it for twenty years? You know, because he could. Because he could, and then in the end, it all nobody worked would out, tell him it? no. Yeah, yeah, and in the end, it worked out, didn't it? Yeah. So, so I, I think uh, you know, um, in the spirit of not overtaxing your your listeners, see. I think be brief, be brilliant, be gone works. Uh, <laughs> if, if there isn't any other profundity that we can share here, uh, I would, I would, I would probably end a conversation by saying um, that you bring, you do, you you bring your brand with you. You do. Um, I can see why people talk to you for forever and ever because you're a very animated listener. You're a very engaged listener. Uh, you do it your own way. Uh, and to your point, the fact that you don't have notes means that you're never looking down, although you do keep pressing your cell phone every now and again because it's it beeping. <laughs> it buzzes, but it is in my pocket. And you need to turn that thing <laughs> off. So, uh, so, so um, you know, I think if, if we were to say, yeah, folks, you, you got something out of this conversation, um, I think there are some pearls here. And mostly what I've enjoyed from this conversation is the fact that you're so invested in this conversation. Thank you. And that's... That's the goal. Um, and I and I enjoy talking to all the varied people that I'm getting to talk to. Um, I spoke with a romance novelist a couple days ago um, on our show. I actually started reading my first romance novel, if you can believe it, <laughs> and I'm enjoying it. <laughs> you know, it's like. And um, I would say, but I'm open. I'm open good, to good, all of it. Good for you, know? you. You're finding just yeah. a whole other world I'm not going to. <laughs> but, but, but you probably just like the covers. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. The, naked, the, the half-naked cowboy is not my thing. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. but, um, but no, it, it's just, it's just the, this kind of open forum mm-hmm. is opening me to a world of new things that I wouldn't have otherwise even taken a look at, like a romance novel, just being an example. Um, you know, I'm, for, I'm almost 40 years old. I've never read one. I probably wouldn't have read one, except I had an interview with a romance novelist, and she sent me a sample of her book. And I thought, well, I should read a couple chapters, you know, before I talked to her. So I read a couple chapters, and I got hooked. It was good. <laughs> you know? so, so and, there I'm, you go. and I'm still reading it, you know, so I'm probably going to finish it by the end of the week. And I'll probably read the rest in the series because it's, you know, because <laughs> now I'm invested. And who would have thought? But, you know, when you're open and engaged, you discover new things. And, and if you're not engaged and you're not willing to be open, you're going to have the exact same life every day. That's true. That is so. true. And I, um, I like to say that life is a work in progress. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and, um, and anticipate it and enjoy it. Bingo. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. It's Thank you. Fun. It was nice having you on the show. I appreciate yeah. it. Me Thank too. you for your time. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're all good. Zach, thanks for setting this up. Yeah, really right. appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah. And letting us come to your office. Yeah. Okay. We, do, we do so many of these in coffee shops and oh, stuff. God. <laughs> and, and I will tell you though, um, and maybe you want to um, run the table a little bit longer, unless we're still <laughs> running. So okay. Good. Yeah. Um, one of the things you probably never want to do, quite frankly, is thank people for their time. And you know why? Because they'll replay the tape and see if they got their time's worth. Uh-huh. So never compare what you've just done to the time you took. So if you are planning to thank somebody, thank them for being so engaging. Thank them for you know one this this wonderful venue. Thank mm-hmm. you for letting me look at the mountains for less or whatever. Mm-hmm. The 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 thank you is is the last thing people remember. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, because primacy, recency, we remember best what we see in here first and last. Mm-hmm. So don't have this wonderful interactive conversation today. I thank you for your time because <laughs> I'm going to play it back and see, oh, my God, that was 22 minutes. Did I get my time's worth? Mm-hmm. That, that's fascinating. It's very similar to what we've talked about with the term interview. 
we want to get away from the term interview because it's, it's, yeah. it's a conversation, it's yeah. a chat, it's a yeah. talk. And we kind of started to we're like talking about the word talk, and we're like, but we don't want to say talk radio because that has a whole other meaning. So right, like, yeah. It's just conversation. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. refreshing. Yeah. 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 So Conversing like, like, conversation. Don't thank, don't thank you for the time. Yeah. Yeah. That. No, because. Um, and for the record, yeah. 37 minutes. 37 That's minutes. There. Okay, there we went, 37 minutes. Yeah. Did you get what you wanted out I of did, this? I did, absolutely. Okay. More than I wanted. I did too. Yeah. Um, and, and, that, and that was, you know, that was, that was, it's one of the interesting things because, you know, I, I don't know from one interview to the next, one conversation to the next, how it's going to go. Bingo. Yeah, <laughs> that's know? true. And, and, and there have been a couple, not not lately, but there have been a couple where 10 minutes in and going, um, okay, not and? sure where we're going to go, you know, mm -hmm. stretching it out to 20 minutes or so gets to be a little difficult. Bingo. You know? But. Uh, you know this. This well, was this was fun. I enjoyed this conversation. Well, thank you. Me too. And, and I'll tell you. And because um, I did an interview this morning too. And I I know me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more fun to know you, and that's what we were doing. And you're like, damn, she's asking me questions. You know, <laughs> and um, and and that's what I think people do find interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, and um. And I don't like the notion of I ask, wait, you answer. I ask, wait, you answer. And that's where you're going with this. It's more yeah, organic. I like that, too. Yeah. yeah. I started the podcasting thing, um, this, this, this iteration of mm -hmm. the podcasting thing, uh, last summer uh, for my 20th high school reunion. We were having trouble getting people interested because everybody's on Facebook and thought oh, they sure. knew everybody. Yeah. So they're like, oh, I talked to those seven people. Why am I going to come there? I'm friends with the yeah. people that I was friends with, and the rest of you I'm yeah. on Facebook with. Who cares? So I said, well, let me do a podcast. Mm -hmm. So I was part of the like, planning committee. Like and they were like, yeah, half of them were like, what's a podcast? And I said, well, I'll interview people. We'll put it on the internet. They can download it and listen to it, and we'll have conversations mm -hmm. and see what people think. Maybe that'll show them that they don't know each other as well as they think they know each other. Um, so the thought was, this was beginning of May. The reunion was mid-August. The thought was maybe I could get one episode yeah. a week. Maybe. <laughs> you know, certainly yeah, I'd get yeah. the 12 of us that were on the reunion planning committee. And, you know, maybe that would be enough. Within three episodes, I had so many people calling in yeah. saying they wanted to be on the show and tell their story that I went two a week wow. all summer long and five weeks past the reunion. That's what I was <laughs> And we had the largest 20th high school reunion turnout of any high school in San Diego last summer. That's impressive. And the entire group spent the in, almost the entire reunion on the outer patio, away from the dance floor, mm -hmm. away from the bar, talking. It was really cool. Yeah. yeah and, there and everybody, your, there was 520 class. people or 530 people in our graduating class, and we had 220 come out. Yeah, it's huge. Um, like, it, was, it, was, it was awesome. Like 80 <laughs> more people than the 10 year high school reunion. Mm. Yeah. And so, you know, once once the kind of fervor of that started to fade away, I was sure. like, I got to keep talking to people. <laughs> and the intellectual was born. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just been growing since then. So that's fun. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you David. Thank, thank you, Zach. Sir. This episode of the Intellectual Podcast has been brought to you by Audible.com. Audible.com has over 100,000 titles for you to download and listen to on your iPad, iPhone, Android, or really any mobile MP3 device that you might have. So if you're into audiobooks and you are looking for the absolute best, show your support for the intellectual by signing up for an Audible trial at audibletrial.com slash T-I-N. That's audibletrial.com slash T-I-N and show your support for the Intellectual Network by signing up for the free trial with audible.com.